Hello, hello, God bless you, and welcome to the House of His Glory, San Pedro, Belize. I am still in Belize. Welcome. I had to extend my stay by a week because there have been incredible storms uh, that have delayed workers, delayed me working. <laughs> but I am actually on my way home when you are watching this. So yet again, if you are watching live at the house of his gloria.com forward slash live, I'm Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones. Welcome <laughs> to yet another sort of impromptu uh, message for this Sunday morning. Um, if you are watching on demand at the house of his glory.com forward slash messages or if you are watching from the church app which is found at iChurch for Life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are in the right spot. <laughs> if you have seen any other videos before, if you have visited us before, clearly this is not my normal background. <laughs> this is actually the background of our kitchen in our vacation rental in San Pedro town, Ambergris Key um, in Belize. And so if this is your first time visiting, I would love it if you would text me and let me know. I will send you a thank you for visiting um, email and Starbucks gift card. And you can text the word hello to 818-873-3370. If any of you, especially during this holiday season, um, would like prayer, confidential prayer, please text the word prayer to 818-873-3370. Amen. Amen. I apologize for not knowing where to look. <laughs> So I look directly at you. I think I found the spot. Um, but bear with me as we go forward. Right after this um, little video introduction, I will be back with prayer. You gave a heavenly breath and now it's air in our chest. That's why we're singing it back to you. For every battle you want, for everything that you've done, and everything that you're gonna do. Seen too much, I ever doubt it. Feel so good, I wanna shout it. Yeah, when I really think about it, all I wanna do, all I wanna do is. That's why we came, that's why we came to lift your name. Come on, I say. Thank you for joining me back for prayer. God bless you. Um, I do. I just want to bless you. That's the prayer that I want to pray for you all. Join me, will you? 
Father God, thank you so very much for this day, for your grace, for your love towards us, your mercy towards us. Your mercies are new every single day. And it's not just mercy upon our souls, but it's mercy that we can live through, that we can extend towards others. And so, Father, I thank you for being in the midst of this time, in the midst of this place. You have shown yourself to be true, to be faithful, to be real, to be a loving and awesome God. And I pray that for everyone watching and listening, worshiping with us, praying with us at this time, Father, that you would show yourself, reveal yourself, make yourself known to everyone uh, within the sound of my voice, no matter when or from where they are watching, touch them, let them feel your presence, let them know that this word is for them, yes, but that you are for them, that you love them, that you want them to live in the blessings and the favor that you have for us all. Father, if there is anyone watching or listening who does not know Jesus as their Savior, Father, I ask that you would draw them closer to you, draw them to the truth that you love them, that you sent Jesus to die for them, and that Jesus went to the cross so that they could be forgiven of all their sins, and that he rose again alive on the third day so that he could live in them and give them new life. Father, help them, touch them, move them to pray that prayer out loud that says, yes, they believe Jesus is Lord. They believe that he died on the cross for their sins and they ask you for forgiveness so that in doing so, they can have everlasting life. Father, Reveal yourself through this message. Speak through me um, and, and just truly allow your heart for us to be heard uh, through this word. Provide answers, provide solutions, provide hope, Father God. We lift up those who are hurting at this time, who are grieving at this time, struggling at this time. We lift up those who are uh, suffering from the ravages of at this time father for every victim uh, of uh, uh, for every family member of every victim of the wars that are raging um, in our world right now comfort them comfort them all as only you can we ask for a ceasefire to every war that is raging not just uh, in foreign countries but Wars that rage on our own soils, wars that rage within the hearts and lives of mankind. Father, I thank you for revealing yourself to us all, for blessing us and keeping us in your care. Father, we just praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray this prayer. Amen. Amen, and God bless you. And if there is anyone who indeed felt that tug of salvation, felt that you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please let me know so I can congratulate you and welcome you to the family of God and send you an e-booklet that says you're saved, what's next? Text the word SAVED to 818-873-3370. And if you have more questions, would like uh, to find out more um, privately on your own without any pressure uh, to do anything, repeat anything, you can go to the website JesusDoesn'tJudge.com. Amen? All right, God bless you. Um, right after this praise song, I am going to be back with the message my husband told me to preach, teach today. I will be back. Amen?
I start to forget all of the great things you did. When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How did I start to believe you weren't sufficient for? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are more than able. You are more than able. You are, you are. All right, all right, as promised, I am back. And as I said, I am back with a message my husband, Terrence, suggested that I preach, teach, repeat. As I said, um, I was expecting that I would have been home already uh, with time to prepare, but I have been, woo, I have been pushing, pushing, pushing to get everything done. And I was at dinner tonight, um, the night that I'm recording this, and something Terrence said just reminded me at the last minute, ah, uh, I have a sermon <laughs> to prepare uh, for you 
all on the day, this day that you are watching. Amen. And so he suggested that I take this opportunity to reteach, re-preach uh, the first message that I had to do at the last minute. <laughs> um, and look, I think I had originally called this Made for Greater, um, but it was over the Caribbean Sea. It might have been a beautiful background, but um, just couldn't hear me over the wind on the sea. And so um, I had felt even then, uh, even as I was delivering it, that it was going to be a message I was going to have to reteach because it's a good one indeed. And so I'm just really thankful uh, that Terrence mentioned it so that I can indeed reteach this now so that you can hear me and you can receive it. And then when I am back, we will have a rightly proper, good, and uh, um, enriching Christmas message. Amen. All right. So, um, so here we go. I'm going to skip over all of this intro. That's enough intro, right? So, let me find where is a good place to start. Excuse me for, for reading. So, here's the deal. I want to talk to you about our blessing being here in Belize, this venture adventure, this project, this exciting um, thing that we are doing here in Belize. And so, ah, this is the title, Great and Greater Blessings Repeat 2.0. <laughs> so here's the background for those of you who couldn't hear it last time, who don't know it. Um, uh, this past May, my husband Terrence and I took a vacation, uh, our first time ever to Belize. And um, we had seen Belize on an episode of Island Hunters. And as we were watching uh, this episode, you know, we just got to thinking and talking like one day, wouldn't it be cool to retire in Belize and buy our own private island. Um, that episode, it was an older episode, but this particular woman found an, her own private island structures built on there, like three room structure, cute little casitas over the water for $350,000. And Terrence and I were just smitten with the idea of one day in the future, retiring to Belize. Well, this past November, in, you know, 2022, it was that Terrence just said, hey, let's go on vacation to Belize next year, 2023, and check it out. See if we really do want to consider retiring there one day, right? Go on vacation, check it out. Well, as I'm booking it, I'm struggling to figure out how to book for some reason. And he says, well, let's just get realtors to show us around. I'm like, realtors don't do that. We're on vacation. But sure enough, we found this amazing agency and that's exactly what they do. No pressure. So fast forward without the nitty gritty details of the story because trust me there is sermon attached to this um but we we fell in love with the island amber grease key 28 miles we fell in love with this piece of property uh that we found and we told the agent who was taking us around don't show it to anyone else. My husband had a light bulb moment and he was like, I think I know how we can make this work. 
And I had a light bulb moment like 10 minutes later where I said, I think I know how we can make this work. And so here it is six months later, literally, we, we went to, ba we left, we arrived in Belize the 1st of May, and it was the last day of November that we were actually approved for occupancy for this place. We brought, bought an empty piece of land, and in six full months, we purchased the land, we built this tiny house that is going to be a vacation rental, furnished it, and wow, wow. And let me tell you, we have seen the hand of God, his favor, and his blessings on every step of this process. It has been amazing. But yes, we realize our circumstances are unusual. Some have said we're living like rich people. Like who does that? Who owns a vacation house? <laughs> rich people do stuff like that, right? Others though just look at us like we must be overextending ourselves. We must be, um, you know, getting in over our heads. We must be doing something beyond our abilities. There's some skepticism uh, about what we're doing, but mostly there's <laughs> excitement, like wonder, like you're doing what? Like, like they think that could never be them. How, how amazing, how extraordinary, how astounding, or how lucky we might be. Well, trust me, when it comes to uh, living beyond our means or getting in over our heads or doing, I mean, we realize we are doing something absolutely extraordinary, but we have also counted up the cost. So, uh, let's read Luke chapter 14, verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sits not down first and counts the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? So, yes, um, after our light bulb moments, into uh, the beginning of the possibility, right? We counted up the cost. We looked at our lives and we said, this is a possibility, can we make it work? You know, as a possibility, we had so much equity uh, in our house that we didn't use for carpet, that we didn't use for the new paint uh, when we got those things, right? We didn't have to take out uh, a loan to put our son through college. All of those things were blessings in and of themselves. And so when Terrence said, hey, you know, I think I know how we can get the money. Let's take out that loan for this. And I said, hey, I think I know how we can pay back that money. Let's open the, uh, an Airbnb, a vacation rental, rent it out and recoup that money, have income coming in to recoup those monies until one day that we do decide to retire then we can build our house on the other part of the land and and retire there and so even in counting up the costs and analyzing the possibilities it still did not negate the blessing involved in in being able to even consider doing that. So, so here's the deal. It's not luck, but it's also not our hard work. It's not our, um, you know, our budgeting and our um, common sense and, you know, our investment, you know, uh, savvy. <laughs> Our new venture is strictly 
the blessing of God, even the decision to do it, even in the decision, uh, even in the calculation of whether or not we could do it. So, but let me be clear. We know that though our circumstances are unusual and what we're doing is not a common thing, that it is absolutely extraordinary, the truth is, even though it's the blessing of God, Terrence and I also know that we are no more blessed than anyone else. Let me repeat that. Just because we're doing this extraordinary, phenomenal thing, and we know that it's the blessing of God that we are able to do it, that does not mean that we somehow have hit the blessing jackpot that doesn't apply or that we are uh, somehow different or exceptional in our ability to receive and partake and uh, pursue this blessing, okay? Let me also now read to you Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Mm -mm -mm. God says blessings will come upon us and overtake us. And let me tell you, that is what Terrence and I truly do feel. We feel as if this has come upon us. That in the consideration of, hmm, maybe one day we might retire there, the blessing of the opportunity came upon us and overtook us. We were overtaken and consumed with the excitement of the possibility. Um, but this verse that I just read from the Old Testament says, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord, these blessings will overtake you. And so if you have been with me and been paying attention to me for any length of time, you know that I teach that Jesus, um, Jesus' death on the cross fulfilled the if of the Old Testament so that we could receive all the blessings of the Old Testament as well as the blessings of the New Testament. We receive the whole Bible of blessings and His promises and His grace uh, and His favor because of Jesus Christ, because Jesus was the only one perfect enough to fulfill the if of God's law, the if of God's word of the old covenant. Amen. And so uh, it's because of Jesus that we can now receive the blessing that will overtake us and, um, and come upon us. Um, but all of those blessings, it's not like we're striving for them. It's not like we're trying to be a good Christian for them or say the right prayer for them or live the right life for them. All of those blessings are already ours. All of those blessings are stored up in heavenly places, scripture says. We are already blessed with spiritual blessings, scripture says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It says that our Heavenly Father has already blessed us, who has blessed us with spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So we covered the in Christ Jesus part, but here's the deal. Far too many people Christians feel like when he says we're blessed with all spiritual blessings, that those are, um, you know, spiritual blessings like his grace, his mercy, his love, salvation, spiritual things, right? Holy things, right? But really,
really what that means is that all of our blessings are spiritual. Whatever our blessings are, the tangible manifest, uh, manifested blessings, uh, because there's a blessing uh, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and have dominion. That's the blessing. But when we're talking about individual blessings, like Christians want to get so holy and make that, you know, compassion and love and, you know, connection to G all these wonderful spiritual things. But we are blessed with tangible goods and real life substance. All right. Um, and, but I think part of the reason why so many of us don't walk in the multitude of those blessings that God has for us um, uh, is because there is still a hearkening to uh, that is involved in receiving God's blessings in your life. Here's what I mean by that. To hearken means to hear and obey. It's not just to hear, it's not just to listen, but when you follow through with what you hear, when you do what you hear, that is the hearkening. And so, yes, I said that, you know, the Old Testament said, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord, right, that all the ifs were, um, were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. But there is still a hearkening to, there is still a listening to the voice of God when it comes to our blessings, even, um, and still, like, this is just the same, whether Old Testament, New Testament, God is saying, if you want to receive the blessings I've stored up for you, if you want to walk in the multitude of the phenomenal, extraordinary blessings that I have for you, you still have to listen and follow through with what I'm saying. So, look, as Christians, and just really just human beings, we have such a formal and strict uh, sort of um, disciplinary perspective of this idea of hearing God and obeying God, right? Being obedient to Jesus and scripture is fundamental to our Christianity, right? That you have to do right, act right, be right, live right, <laughs> speak right, right? There's this obedience. And if God tells you to do something, you do it, right? And I, you know, when I came into my salvation and really my calling, I was in a church that said delayed obe obedience is still disobedience. Well, I learned that truth be told, delayed obedience simply means delayed blessings. Delayed blessings. Because, well, that's a whole nother message talking about the obedience of a Christian. Um, but when we talk about hearing God's voice, right, we, we think God's going to tell us, stop lying. Stop cursing, stop drinking, stop smoking, stop, 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 stop. And we think our obedience is that type of stuff, right? We think our obedience is, is limited to give or to serve others, to be a blessing to others, to minister to others. And so that's where we think our obedience um, lies when it comes to hearing the voice of God. But there is a hearing that we have probably ignored, pushed aside, downplayed, and rejected all our lives without even knowing it, without even realizing it. Because it's the thing inside us that we hear that we answer with, oh, I could never do that. Or I wish I could do that. It's the thing that we hear in our spirit, in our minds, in our heart. That thing that's like, 
that we might answer back with no nah, things like that never happened to me I could never do that it's that thing inside of us that we ignore we push aside we downplay for what's reasonable for what's logical for what's realistic for what's probable what we can imagine ourselves accomplishing or the things that we think we should accomplish we push aside that crazy thought for something that no I need to do this first I should be doing that first or you know we're like Psh, things like that never happened to me right I could never do anything like that it's when you have dreams and thoughts and desires wishes and hopes that you answer with something that negates that, that pushes that aside, that rejects that, that doesn't even consider that thought, that dream, that hope, that fleeting vague, oh, I wish, I, oh, I wish. How many times do we answer something, oh, I wish, right? Instead, maybe we might consider answering with a, why not? Because maybe that inkling, that thought, that hope, that desire, that dream is God trying to speak the blessing and the possibility of that blessing into your life. Because, you know, scripture says that when we delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. So how come those desires, those fleeting desires, those crazy desires like going, wow, I'd love to live on an island one day. Maybe I own my own island one day. Maybe I'll retire and that crazy thought maybe could be something that God has placed in there, a desire that he's placing in your heart so that he can give you that desire of your heart. And so the hearkening that we don't usually partake in is that hearkening that says, maybe I could do that. Let me just check that out. Why don't I just try? Why not? Or why not me? That's the biggest thing. Why not me? Why not us? Why not? Why not? Why not go for it? Why not try? Why not consider it? Why not? That's the hearkening, the doing and the pursuing of God's blessings that he might just possibly have for you that you wouldn't even know if you didn't just consider. Maybe. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. See, no one is blessed more than anyone else. No one is favored more than anyone else. All you have to do, the only prerequisite is that you love the Lord your God. And that verse says that he's already prepared it. He's already prepared it and you can't even imagine it. And because you can't imagine it, because you can't dream it up on your own, because you are inclined to say, that's not reasonable, that's not realistic, I have to think logically, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to take care of this, I have to be responsible, because he knows that's how we're going to be. He will put those whispers. He will put those thoughts. He will put those desires and those dreams in your minds and in your, in your thinking, in your thought processes. And if we open ourselves up, we would be amazed, shocked at our own lives and the things that God might want to do through them and for us simply because he loves us not because we earn it or we deserve it or we've worked hard for it but simply because he loves us God has amazing things in store for everyone 
everyone. Everyone. And it may not be property in Belize and an international uh, business corporation, but it's something. It's something amazing. And not just one something. Who knows what your amazing could be? Could it be a business? Could it be an adventure? Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's traveling around the world. Maybe it is an organization. Uh, maybe you are meant to be a CEO. Maybe you are meant to um, uh, own apartment complexes. Maybe you are meant to have halfway houses for pregnant young girls. Maybe, 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 maybe. We just read the verse that says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor the heart imagined what he has for you. What he has for you. And like I said, it's because we can't imagine them, because we can't figure out how to accomplish them. We can't see ourselves doing anything outside of what we're already doing. Or worse, we've looked ahead according to our own limitations and not the vastness of God's unknowable possibility. And we squash the potential for great and greater blessings in our lives. God has great and greater blessings for you. And so open your heart. Take a chance past what you can see or imagine for yourself and listen. Listen to that still, small, quiet, and seemingly crazy voice <laughs> that you ordinarily push aside and ignore. And allow God to say, yeah, that's me. That's the blessing that I have just for you. Amen? God bless you. God bless you. That is the word that God has for us all to Day. Let's go into this song of worship, and I'll be back with partnership and closing prayer. I love you so very much.
Okay, God bless you. I got to be a little bit quick. I saw a battery low warning. And again, and as always, I don't want to rush through uh, what God wants to do. So I am going to take my time and allow God <laughs> to, to push this through so uh, before the battery dies. So this is the time that I want to invite you to partner with this ministry, to partner with the ministry so that you can learn these kinds of lessons and receive the kinds of blessings that God has just for you. Now, I know we had TJ here. He said that he heard this message and he needed to hear this message. And I pray that maybe delivering it again means that more people get in on hearing this message. God wants to bless you. And when I say God wants to bless you, wants to pour out his blessings on you. He does that through your giving. Malachi 3 and 10 says, bring your tithe into the storehouse and see. Try him. Test him. He's giving you permission to see if he will not pour you out a blessing so great it cannot be contained. The blessings pour into your life so that he can pour you out as a blessing into someone else's life through your giving. And so I invite you at this time, members, to bring your tithes or anyone. You can bring an offering at this time or if you have a need in your life that you'd like to sow a seed towards. If you're watching live, there's a giving link above the logo. If you're on the website or on the app, there's giving links there as well. Or if you would rather, you can also give by way of cash app at dollar sign, H-O-H-G church. Um, or you can give by way of Zell at contact at the house of his glory dot com. And you can also receive God's blessings for this ministry, for this organization for this congregation of the house of his glory by partnering with this congregation and so i invite you to go to the website go to the contact page go to the link that says join the congregation or you can text the word join to 818-873-3370 i would love to partner with you and see what is god going to do for us and through us as a church and as individuals and so however you give thank you for your giving thank you for being a blessing god says in blessing i will bless you that's what we're talking about the blessings of god let's go now into closing Amen, amen, amen. I hope that you were blessed. Even if you did um, uh, see this message before, were able to hear this message be before, I still pray that you were doubly blessed, that you did not uh, feel like this was a waste of your time to hear this message again. Um, I actually feel fabulous being able to deliver it in a way that I know that you can hear it and receive it. And I pray that you do. So that's my prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word. Just thank you for this word and the opportunity to re-deliver this word. I truly do believe that this was of your heart as well. You want to make sure that your people know you've blessed them you have blessings for them and that they are just being laid up collecting dust <laughs> heavenly dust because we have not learned how to hearken to your word and so i just pray father god that this message removes every uh shackle of limitation and hesitation and unsurety uh that even as we 
uh, some of us are struggling through difficult times that we don't feel as though our negative circumstances uh, keep us from being blessed or that we feel too guilty to be blessed, um, that we understand that whatever blessings you have for us are a sign of your love for us, your favor and your grace and your comfort, even your comfort. Father, open our eyes to purpose and possibility. Father, heal our bodies. Heal the bodies of those that we're praying for. Father, teach us how to pray prayers of faith, true and absolute faith, but teach us how to recognize uh, when our faith cannot overcome the limited faith of others to receive and to understand. Father, help us to understand those things that are too difficult to understand in our own humanity, in our own knowledge, in our own reasoning. Give us wisdom, insight, and clarity that only comes from above. Father, give us health and strength and the ability to see our communities, friends, and neighbors through your eyes. To see the world through your eyes. To watch the news through your eyes. To socialize uh, with our friends and family with your heart. Father, I just praise you and thank you and just give you all the glory. Pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen and amen. I love you all. Until I return from Belize, be blessed. Go in his power, walk in his glory, and receive all the blessings of the kingdom of God that he has just for you. I love you so very much. Bye-bye.